a number two seed against a number three seed. All right, we'll give it to Duke. See, this is a very highly scientific process I'm doing here, as you can see. For all the buzz around online sports betting, you might think that holding shares of gaming companies would be a winning hand. But over the last year, that's hardly been the case. Shares of DraftKings are down 74% over the past 12 months, while rival Penn National Gaming shares have fallen 63%. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 is up 15% over the same period. So how is it that one of the most talked about industries, which has added millions of new users, is seeing such weak stock performance? For starters, it costs money to be a buzzworthy sector. The American Gaming Association estimates that 45 million Americans were granted permission to gamble legally in their state in 2021, and gaming companies have been spending top dollar to attract gamblers to their platforms. In an Investor Day presentation earlier this year, DraftKings said it takes about two to three years for the company to earn profits in various states. Big states such as New York, Illinois, and Colorado have only allowed gambling in recent years, so DraftKings as a company hasn't been profitable, even though states which allowed betting earlier turned a profit. Well, that's the way it is with gamblers. Easy come, easy go. While revenue doubled between 2020 and 2021, losses widened as DraftKings faced increasing costs setting up its business in new states and nearly doubling its sales and marketing spending. For someone looking to place a bet, DraftKings' offer of a deposit bonus of up to $1,000 or a free bet when signing up may be enticing, but DraftKings investors see their losses mounting from those promos. Similar dynamics are at play at rival betting sites. Although Penn National Gaming has been profitable, it was the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 in 2021. The company's bid last year to get a betting license in New York wasn't accepted, and that hurt the shares and profits. In the fourth quarter of 2021, Penn National earned 26 cents a share, well below analyst estimates of 52 cents. States see a revenue opportunity in gaming, and that's another cost for gaming companies. New York State has one of the highest tax rates for sports betting, 51% of gambling revenue. Since online sports betting launched in the state on January 8th, there has been roughly $2 billion wagered in the first month, leading to $138 million in gross revenue for betting companies and $70 million for the state's coffers. Other states have much lower tax rates on gaming revenue in the single digits or low teens, but it's worth noting the size of the New York market. In just five weeks, the state saw more than 2 million player accounts launched. New York became the largest bookmaking market in the country, quickly surpassing Nevada and New Jersey. Even if other states have better tax treatment, the size of their business may not compare to New York. Here's what my colleague Andrew Berry has to say about the prospects for betting companies. The big problem for the sports gambling industry right now is it's very competitive. There are probably about a dozen participants right now. They're all fighting for market share and they're spending very heavily on marketing and promotions. The regional uh, companies are doing better because they have existing land-based uh, casinos, often riverboats and other regional properties uh, throughout the, con the country, which are doing quite well. And um, that gives them significant cash flow and earnings that can basically offset some of the losses that they're taking now as they build out their um, online sports gambling businesses. Essentially what's going on is that throughout the stock market, investors are really demanding that companies show a path to profitability or are profitable. I mean, in the tech world and biotech, I mean, there's been a big sell off in companies that basically are not profitable. Investors a year ago were very forgiving. They're willing, they're willing to forgive a lack of profitability for the potential down the road. Now investors are saying, show us the money now, or at least show us the money relatively soon. And the sports gambling industry uh, has kind of been a, been a victim of that. For now, I'm going to try my hand at DraftKings. Okay, after sitting out the second round of March Madness, I am ready to play again. So we are placing bets on the Sweet 16, upping my bet from a dollar a game to $2 a game. I know, I'm a high roller. So here's who I have winning in the matchups. I'm for Miami, UCLA, Providence, St. Peter's, Houston, Duke, Villanova because of Philly, and Gonzaga. So we'll see how I did. Uh, payouts on these games is looking like uh, $3.81 on a $2 bet, except for that Miami matchup where I could get a whole $3.90. So in the next few days, we'll see how I did.
Okay, so the sweet 16 is behind us. Now that was a bracket buster for many, but you remember I uh, placed my bets on the spread and let's take a look to see at how I did. So on the Miami game, came out ahead, UCLA, they didn't do so hot and I ended up losing. Providence, that was a win for me. Houston was a win for me. Duke, a win. Villanova, Philly girl here, a win for me. Gonzaga did not have it. St. Peter's and they prevailed over Purdue and that was a bet that I won. I don't know how many others had it, but feeling pretty good about that because I heard a lot of guys complaining about that after that game. So let's take a look at my final tally in my DraftKings account. You remember, I started with $100 in my account. Um, I did place that bet on the Sixers. That didn't go my way. That took me down to 80. Uh, tried to win some of it back in the first round of March Madness. Uh, didn't quite get me completely back, but a little bit better. And now I have a balance of $89.22. So I'm feeling a bit better. Let's see what happens next.